want to take you straight to Grand Rapids, Michigan. You can see Vice President Kamala Harris there. She's been working the battleground state of Michigan. She's at Riverside Park holding a rally there. Let's listen in. for taking time out of your very busy lives for us to all be here together this afternoon. I thank you so very much for all you do, all you have done, and all you will do over these next 18 days. Thank you all so very much. Thank you. This is an incredible group of incredible leaders, and your voice matters so much right now, and I think there is so much about our campaign that is about the spirit of reminding everyone that we're all in this together. We are all in this together. So thank you. And to all the governors who are here with us today, I'm telling you, they're riding thick. They're riding thick. Oh, and they are all, each one of them, such incredible leaders, both for their state and our nation, and such dear friends. And I thank you all, including, of course, Michigan's own Governor Whitmer, <laughs> who we love as Big Gretch. And to the governors, I want to say you've been traveling the country for our campaign, and I'm so deeply grateful for your support. I also want to recognize Senator Stabenow, a champion for Michigan, Representative Skolton, who we will re-elect to the United States Congress. And while we're at it, let's send Representative Slotkin to the United States Senate. So we got work to do. 18 days. 18 days left in one of the most consequential elections of our lifetime. And as you know, everyone here knows, this election is truly about two very different visions for our nation. Ours that is focused on the future. Donald Trump's that is focused on the past ours that is focused on bringing down the cost of living for working families, investing in small businesses and entrepreneurs, ours that is about protecting reproductive freedom. But none of that is what we hear from Donald Trump. Instead, it is just the same old tired playbook. He has no plan for how he would address the needs of the American people. And he is, as we have seen, only focused on himself. And now he is ducking debates and canceling interviews. Come on. And, and check this out. His own campaign team recently said it is because of exhaustion. Well, if you are exhausted on the campaign trail, it raises real questions about whether you are fit for the toughest job in the world. Come on. Come on. So for all these reasons and more, we are here because we know it is time to turn the page. 
It is time to turn the page because America is ready to chart a new way forward. America is ready for a new and optimistic generation of leadership that is all of us. All of us. Which is why Democrats, Republicans, and independents are supporting our campaign. In fact, earlier this week, over 100 Republican leaders from across the country joined me on the campaign trail, including some who even served in Donald Trump's own administration. The people who know him best, right? And I believe all of this shows that the American people want a president who works for all the people. And that has been the story of my entire career. In my career, I've only ever had one client, the people, the people. As a young courtroom prosecutor, I protected women and children. As Attorney General of California, I fought for students and veterans. As Vice President, I have stood up for workers and seniors. And as President, I will stand up for all Americans. All Americans. And together, we will build a brighter future for our nation. Yes, we will. Because, by the way, we will win. We will win. We will win. Come on. <laughs> yes, we will. We will win. We will win. And we will win. And one of the reasons that we know we are working hard toward that win is because we believe together in building a future, in what we can do together as a nation, and a nation of people who see what we have in common, more than what separates us. We will w build towards a future where we have an economy that works for all Americans. We will build what I call an opportunity economy so that every American has an opportunity to own a home, buy a car, build wealth, and start a business. In fact, do we have any small business owners here? I love our small businesses. I got a plan for you. I love our small businesses. Our small businesses are part of the backbone of America's economy. Bless you all for the work you are doing. So under my plan, we will also bring down the cost of housing. And we will help entrepreneurs start and grow small businesses. My plan will expand Medicare to cover the cost of home health care for our seniors. So that more of our seniors can live with dignity. And you know, I just give you a little background on it in terms of a personal story. So I took care of my mother when she was sick. And for any of you who have taken care of an elder relative, you know what that is, right? It's about trying to cook something that they can eat. It's about trying to find clothes that they can, they can handle on their skin. It's about trying to, from time to time, think about something that'll put a smile on their face or maybe just make them laugh. It's about dignity. But under the current system, and especially for those in the sandwich generation who are raising young kids while you're taking care of your parents, it's difficult, and under the current system, to get help for taking care of your seniors, unless you got the extra money sitting around, you'd have to leave your job or pay down all of your savings to qualify for Medicaid. That's not right. That's not right. So my plan is about saying, let's have Medicare cover the cost of home health care for our seniors, <laughs> which is a matter of understanding how real people are living and understanding the importance of everyone being entitled to dignity. <laughs> Our plan in terms of an opportunity economy will lower costs on everything from health care to groceries. 
I'll take on corporate price gouging because I've done it before and I will do it again. My plan will also give middle class tax cuts to 100 million Americans, including $6,000 tax credit for the first year of a child's life so that our young parents can do what they naturally want to do, which is parent their children well, but they don't always have the resources to be able to do it. So let's help them out so that they can buy a car seat, so that they can buy a crib, so that they can take care of that baby's needs during that critical phase of their development. We all benefit from it. We all benefit from it. Dignity. My plan also invests in American manufacturing and innovation, because I will make sure America, not China, wins the competition for the 21st century. That's right. That's right. And so, to that point, and with pride, we all say, we must and we will invest in the industries that built America, like steel, iron, and the great American auto industry. And we will ensure that the next generation of breakthroughs from advanced batteries to electric vehicles are not just invented, but built right here in America by American union workers. And Michigan, I know I'm going to tell you what you already know, but let us be clear for folks who are watching from different parts of the country. Contrary to what my opponent is suggesting, I will never tell you what kind of car you have to drive, but here is what I will do. I will invest in manufacturing communities like Kent County. Together, we will retool existing factories, hire locally, and work with unions to create good-paying jobs. Including jobs that do not require a college degree, because here's where I come from. I know a college degree is not the only measure of the skills and experience of a qualified worker. And I intend to re-examine federal jobs, when you all elect me president, to assess those jobs that should not have that requirement. And then I intend to challenge the private sector to do the same. Now, all of this is to say Donald Trump has a different approach. He makes big promises, <laughs> and he always fails to deliver. So remember, he said he was the only one. You know how he talks. He, the only one who could bring back America's manufacturing jobs. Then. America lost almost 200,000 manufacturing jobs when he was president. Facts, including tens of thousands of jobs right here in Michigan. And those losses started before the pandemic, making Donald Trump one of the biggest losers of manufacturing jobs in American history. And his track record for the auto industry was a disaster. He promised workers in Warren that the auto industry would, and I'm going to quote, not lose one plant during his presidency. Those were his words, not one plant. Then American automakers announced the closure of six auto plants when he was president, including General Motors in Warren, and Stellantis in Detroit. Thousands of Michigan auto workers lost their jobs. 
And Donald Trump's running mate recently suggested that if they win, they would threaten the Grand River Assembly plant in Lansing, okay? The same plant our administration protected earlier this year, saving 650 union jobs. 650 union jobs. His running mate called those table scraps. So we fought hard for those jobs. Vice President uh, Kamala Harris on the campaign trail. She and actually uh, former President Donald Trump both in the great state of Michigan. She's in Grand Rapids now. Uh, she'll be hitting some other areas. Also the former president. 538 polling showing Harris and Trump neck and neck in the Great Lakes state right now. The vice president remaining just ahead of Trump by less than a percentage point. Yep. And I love the picture. It's it's the home stretch when the when the leaves are that color, and they're out there with their. <laughs> it's a sign we're last. 18 days away. Yeah, that's it. That's it. And her energy's up, and the candidates' energy's up, and the flags are flying, and the crowds are big, and it, it's a. I, I love covering campaigns at this point of the year. Yeah, well, it's coming down to the wire, too. Yep. This one is, I mean, who knows what is going to happen in 17 mm -hmm. days. Our White House correspondent, Mary Alice Pars, has been track tracking all the campaign events. It's sort of hard to keep up with everybody. They've been moving fast. They've been on a blitz. Uh, some more so than others. Uh, they sure love going at each other about various interviews, not doing interviews, doing interviews. But as we can see, the VP uh, pretty energized there at her rally in Grand Rapids and ready to go, Mary Alice. Yeah, and a lot of attention being played to where exactly in Michigan she is. She's been spending a lot of time and attention talking about plants there in Michigan that had got uh, sort of a boost and energy and funding from the Biden administration to be retooled to focus on electric vehicles, uh, sort of building and rebuilding plants, bringing jobs and energy back to U.S. manufacturing around electric vehicles. The Trump team, of course, has promised to scale all that back, to roll back um, initiatives and funding around electric vehicle programs. And sort of, uh, um, I imagine, a more and more that conversation um, targeted toward auto workers and unions and, and sort of the economy of that state in this final stretch. You know, I've spent a lot of time on the ground in Michigan, Terry. Of course, I know you have as well. And it's interesting talking to those auto workers. Of course, some anxious about an economy of the future, others that say they have to be a part of building electric vehicles. We know that in this final stretch, Harris is going to really benefit from the fact that the unions themselves have endorsed her. Whether or not all the union members vote with their union endorsement, those unions come with a big organizational machine, a big get out the vote machine. And the Harris campaign is really hoping to lean on some of that organizational support in these next two weeks, guys. And that'll be critical for sure. All right, Mary Alice Parks, thank you so much.